This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Caradimos. We're going to take a look at another type of factoring problem. We have a problem and it's called factoring and uh, we're going to look at trinomials. So uh, what's a trinomial? Well, it's a trinomial is a three-term polynomial. Let me give you an example. So uh, here's one where I've got x squared plus uh, 4x minus 32. All right, now there is a special technique on factoring this, and first thing I always do is look to see, do these terms, do these three terms have something in common? And no, they do not. <coughs> so since they have nothing in common, we're going to use a special type of factoring, and uh, this is how uh, many people do it, but they take this number over here and they put it down. They say, okay, here's a negative 32. And now what we do is we write down what are some factors uh, or some, yeah, some factors of negative 32. Or in other words, just two factors that when you multiply them, you get negative 32. Like for instance, you have 2 times negative 16. Or maybe you have negative 2 times a positive 16. Now it turns out when you multiply these, sure you do get negative 32. But now there's an added requirement. The requirement is that we're supposed to get 4 when we add them. So here I'm getting a negative 14. Here I'm getting a positive 14. These do not work. So bzz, bzz, those don't work. So what we're going to do is try some else. Well, let's see. Uh, how about, um, let's see, so I'm working my way up the ladder. How about, uh, I don't know. Well, you know, there is 1 times 32. One of them has to be negative. And again, this is even a worse scenario because when I add those, I'm getting 31. Even worse, not even close, right? And here I'm adding these, I'm getting a negative 31. It's even farther away, so that's getting worse. So let's try 4. 4 and negative 8. Or negative 4 and positive 8. Let's see, this is adds together. And we're getting negative 4. Well, well, that's the right number, but just the wrong sign. Well, see, I add these two guys together, and there you go. There's the winner. Those two add up to be a positive 4. So that's where I'm going to go to now my solution. So the way we're going to write the solution is with two factors, and each of these is going to be a binomial. So what I'm, I'm going to do is now put x times x, is x squared and remember we said that this is the winning combination so we're going to put a negative 4 and a positive 8 and there you have it so that is the those are the factors for this trinomial so when I multiply these two binomials together I'll get this trinomial done okay let's go on to number two and after a while after doing a few of these you do get better at them uh, so let's take a look at a different problem. Now, this, this one does look different. So 2x squared minus 28x plus 96. All right, well, it turns out that hmm, when I look at those three terms, these terms have a factor in common. You'll notice that, well, they don't have x's in common, but I can divide all those numbers by 2. So since that's the case, I'm going to try to factor that out because it'll make life easier when, I, when these numbers are actually lower. So I always factor out a term if I can, or if I, I'm sorry, not a term, but I'm going to factor out a common factor. All right, now what I'm doing is dividing all these numbers by 2. So in other words, 2 times 1x squared is 2x squared. 2 times negative 14x. So 2 times that, I get back negative 28x. And then 2 times 48 is 96. So I'm doing the distributive property. And you can see I'm getting back the original problem. All right, now this problem, now that I have this coefficient of 1 here, this problem is exactly like the one previous to it. I've got this 48. So what I do is I put down 48. I'm going to try to think of what are all the things that can multiply together to get 48. 
uh, let's see, like 1 times 48. Now, when I multiply those, sure, I do get 48, but I add them together, I get 49. I'm trying to get a negative number. So it turns out that these both would have to be negative. So now I do multiply, I get positive 48. Nah, but I still add them, I'm getting a negative 49. That's just not close enough. Okay, so it's not giving us the negative 14, so I have to search for some other numbers. So let's try negative 2, and let's try, how about 24? And that would have to be a negative 24. All right, so when I add those, I'm getting a negative 26. Well, it's better than the negative 49, but it's still not working. So let's try negative 4, and that would be negative 12. Let's see, I add those, negative 16. Eh, I'm really close, but it's still not working. So let's try negative 6. Negative 6 times negative 8. Yep, they multiply to be 48, and they add up to be negative 14. So ding, ding, ding. That is the answer. Uh, those are the two factors. So I factor this, and I say that's x minus 6, x minus 8. So I just factored this trinomial, but now I'm also going to bring down this 2, because that was part of the original problem, and it turns out that you have a constant, or just a 2 is a factor, x minus 6, which is a binomial, is a factor, and x minus 8, another binomial, is a factor. So I got three factors that when I were multiply them, I would get back this trinomial. All right, so hard problem. All right, let's take a look at a problem that even gets harder still. So I'm going to make a little room for myself. So I'm going to lower this down a little bit. And I'm going to try to make a little bit more room for another problem. Okay, so here's one that's going to be different still. So I'm going to put, uh, this is my third problem. Let's go 6x squared minus 5x minus 4. All right, so first thing I do is I look, do these three terms have something in common? And no, they don't have x's in common. This one's not, have, it doesn't have an x. I can't divide them all by a number, like let's say 2. That can't be divided by 2. So they really don't have anything in common. So there's nothing I can take out of all three terms. So the next thing I'm going to do is try to factor it as two binomials. Now. To do this, it does require, at least the method I'm about to show you, it shows uh, that there is some trial and error to this. And um, just like we multiplied x times x, we get x squared. Oops, we get x squared right there. Well, we got to multiply a couple things together uh, to get a 6x squared. So, like, you can multiply 6x times 1x. Okay, so that would, if I multiply those guys together, I would get 6x squared. Uh, let's see, what do I multiply together to get a negative 4? Well, let's see, I could do a 4, a 1, but somehow it's got to be negative, so it's got to be, let's say, a negative and a positive. All right, so you'll notice that I multiply these, I'll get negative 4. If I multiply these, I get 6x squared. But how do you check? How do you make sure that you get a negative 5x in the middle? Well, there is a way to check. And uh, besides making a giant box or something to multiply the two binomials together, instead what you could do is you could multiply inner numbers together and multiply outer numbers together. Okay, so I can multiply these and I get 1x. Multiply these, I get negative 24x. Uh, and when I add those together, nope, I'm not getting the negative 5. So it's not working. So I guess we've got to try it again. And that's what you get to do. And, and there's a lot of trial and error in this. So you say, okay, well, let's try something else. What if I tried 6x and instead I put uh, uh, 2. And let's say a 1x and a negative 2. Oh, yeah, by the way, even if I did switch around these negatives, this would be a negative 1 and a positive 24, right, if I switch them around. It, it's still not going to work. And even if I put the 4 here and the 1 over here, 
it's not going to work either because I'm going to get 4 and 6. 4 and 6, no matter if I add them or subtract them, I'm not going to get 5. So even if I switch the position here, the 4 and the 1, and I tried multiplying to get the inside and the outside, and I can, you can pause the video and try it yourself, it's not going to work. So that's why I'm abandoning this 1, 4 and trying something else. Okay, so let's try this. Uh, if I multiply those guys and I multiply those guys. Well, let's see. If I multiply the inner, I get 2x. If I multiply the outer, I get negative 12x. Add them together, I get negative 10. Nope. Even if I made this a negative and that a positive, that would be a negative 2 and a positive 10. Negative 2 and positive 10, that would be an 8. Eh, still not going to work. So there's a lot of trial and error in this, right? And it looks like the 6 and 1 is just not working. So we go for another possibility. So now we try 3x and 2x. We try this combination, and we hope we strike it. We strike it rich, and we get this uh, answer correct also. All right, well, uh, let's see. How am I going to get 4? Uh, well, I don't know. I'm going to try 4 and 2. Oop, that's not going to work. 4 and 2. Oop, that doesn't multiply to be 4. It's got to be 4 times 1, right? And one of them has to be negative. So let's try this one negative and this one positive. All right, well, again, I have them set up so that I multiply these, I get 6x squared. Multiply these, I'm getting negative 4. Now I just want to see, am I getting the negative 5 in the middle? And that's where this multiplying the inside and multiplying the outside is the check. All right, well, let's see. Multiply the in, I get 8x. Multiply the outside, I get negative 3x. I add these together, I get 5x. Whoa, that's close. I'm looking for a negative 5. So that tells us, wow, we are really close. So I just need to switch. It needs to switch signs. So in other words, this right here has got to change. That spot right there is supposed to be the negative. Okay, negative should be there, and a positive should be there. So now when I multiply these guys, I'm getting negative 8. Multiply these guys on the outside, I'm getting positive 3. When I'm adding these, I'm getting negative 5. Ding, ding, ding. There you go. It's working. And there's the solution. So it looks like that's the solution right there. 3x minus 4, 2x plus 1. Those are the factors when I multiply. They go back to this original. And I found my solution. Okay, so those get harder when this term here in front is not a 1. The check is kind of hard because you got to check the middle term and it takes some work. The reason why we didn't have to go through all those steps and do the middle term here is because we got some luck here because when I multiply these together I'm just getting negative 8x. And when I multiply these guys together I'm getting negative 6x. See I'm still getting the 6 and 8 because these numbers in front are 1's, it doesn't really change anything when I multiply. So that's why it's easy when this number here in front of the x squared, so the coefficient in front of the x squared, when it's 1, it's easy. You just basically look at those numbers. And you don't have to go through all those you know, the steps that uh, are right there. So that's why I didn't do that. I didn't show that. It's only when this coefficient is other than 1 does it get a bit tricky. Uh, all right, so make sure you go back to mathguide.com. Check out our, all of our interactive lessons, quizzes, and many activities and videos. All right, take care.